The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In our previous episode, we built a frame for a motorized camera dolly. In today's episode, we're going to add a belt system, stepper motor to drive it, and controller, so we can move the dolly at a user-selected speed, slow or fast. We'll then set up a cool time-lapse shot so you can see what it can do in action. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I finally got my hands on an Oculus Rift, and I even put custom knobs on the side. Oculus Rift is a VR headset that has an LCD here, and there's special lenses which split the image into stereo. And it's very immersive. It takes up quite a bit of your field of view, and it reacts to the way your head moves, so you can look around the virtual world. It's very cool. Now, there's a scary game for it called Alone in the Rift. It's kind of like Slender Man, but there's a little ghost girl instead of a Slender Man. I've already played it, so watching me react won't be very good. But I had Allison play it for the first time. She never used the Rift or played this game. Her reaction's much better because I secretly filmed it. Wait, what? <laughs> oh my gosh, there's something spooky in there. There's like a person in there. Do I run away? What do I do? I don't know. What do you think you should do? I think I should run away! <laughs> <laughs> or should I go in there? I don't know what the objective is. Does she? Can she just kill me like Slender Man? Or do I want to see her? I don't know if you can just walk past her. Everyone usually walks in there, though. Well, I don't think I'm gonna be that person. <laughs> you can try to try to avoid her and see what happens. Oh my gosh, Ben! I don't know if I want to go in there. You probably don't. You'll probably get freaked out. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! But what if she can get me anyways? Maybe I should just go in there because then at least I know that. Yeah, she's... I might as well get it over with. <sighs> okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh no! no, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe she's just, you know, like, uh. tired. <laughs> In the previous episode, we got the track moving back and forth. Now we're going to motorize it. I 3D printed these two endpoints that'll hold an idler pulley and a drive pulley. I'm gonna mount them on the inside of the board here. So when you move this thing around or set it on end, you won't bash the motors. So I'm gonna do that first, and then we'll attach a belt to this so we can drive it. I put some spray adhesive on this so I can put it in position and hold it there until I get the screws in place. There we go. Now I can drill the screws into the wood. Got to get this set nut in here so it'll hold the screw that holds the shaft in place. Now I'm going to fit this pulley driver that I 3D printed onto the motor shaft. Get this whole little love here. and then secure it with this bolt that I drove through. First pulley's hooked up, but well, I think I'm gonna add a limit switch next 
so this thing knows when it's gotten to the end. So I'm gonna put a limit switch here and probably one on that end too. I'm gonna use the adhesive trick again and put a limit switch right here. I'm gonna put it ahead a little bit so it hits the limit switch before it would actually bump into anything else so it can be stopped in time. Stop! Ah, stop! Hammer time! Now we're attaching the idler mount. The two pulleys are in place and the belt rolls on them smoothly. The next step is to attach the belt to the platform that moves back and forth. And also, since this was the longest belt I can get, I need to make a clip so I can attach two of these belts together so I have the full range of motion that I need. Now I'm going to attach the belt. So I've got these wooden blocks here and here, and I also 3D printed these couplers so we can extend the belt and connect it together. Element 14 is your Dev Kit Headquarters. Dev Kit HQ. Easier with a huge in-stock selection of the industry's most popular Dev Kits. Dev Kit HQ. Easier with exclusive devices developed in collaboration with Element 14 and top suppliers. Dev Kit HQ. Easier with a complete solution ready to ship today. Dev Kits, software, design tools, operating systems, test equipment, and much, much more. Dev Kit HQ. Easier with 24-5 live online chat or a direct call to our technical support team. Hello team, it's me, Kit HQ. Easier with the Node online technical library and research tool to find all the information you need. Kit HQ. Adopting the latest technologies just got easier with your DevKit HQ, Element 14. Whose boots have your bed been under? Nobody's bed has to have your boots Oh, right. I guess that makes more sense. Now I need to uh, figure out the best place to split these belts. It has to be in a place where it won't, you know, go through the gears. So I'll probably put it right around here. That way it won't go all the way through that one or this one. Yeah, so that's a good spot right there. Okay, I'll just push the belt into the coupler. Okay, you can let go now. I have the complete loop working now. What we basically made here is a large CNC gantry, although it doesn't have to be super accurate. And we could remove the belts if we wanted to move this by hand to do like some shots for our show. I hooked up an LED to the end of the stepper motor to demonstrate how just moving the stepper motor creates current. I mean, that's how a generator works. It rotates a motor to create electricity versus electricity causing the motor to rotate. The reason you need to be mindful of that is um, when you have the motor hooked up to some circuitry, such as a stepper driver or your CNC machine, just moving the CNC machine around by hand back feeds current into your circuitry, which can potentially damage it. So you should unplug your stepper motors before doing any manual travel on the beams. Now it's time to wire up the electronics for the dolly. I got this off Kickstarter last year. It's a DigiSpark. It's basically a little plug and play AT Tiny 85 development board. I bought 10 of them and I haven't used them for anything. So you know what, I'm gonna use them for this project. I'm gonna make a little breadboard so the DigiSpark can plug right into it. That way you can remove it and plug it into your computer's USB port to change the program. I also have a stepper motor driver, which will drive our motor. And then this pot here will allow you to change the speed at which the whole thing moves. So you can go anywhere from like a smooth, you know, controlled motion to a very slow stepping motion if you wanna do a time lapse. Time to get this wired up. Automatic wire stripper for when your teeth are worn out. Also crimps.
I'm hooking 12 volts up directly to the um, stepper driver here and it'll regulate it down to five volts. So I'll use the regulated five volts off of this to drive the microcontroller. It has a regulator too, but there's no point in using both of them. I have this board all wired up and ready to go. The DigiSpark can be removed from it easily, so you can hook it into your computer for programming. I'm using my older Sony VIA laptop because these don't necessarily always match the USB spec, so they don't work on all USB ports or uh, hubs. So I'm just gonna use the DigiSpark version of Arduino to program this. It's basically you're gonna use the knob for really slow time lapse or fast movements, just like a slow pan. There'll be a min and max switch so it doesn't go past the edges and there'll be a button which starts or stops the sequence. Time to install the driver board into our frame. I've put Molex disconnects on all the plugs so it's easy to hook up the limit switches. There's a minimum and maximum limit switch. The uh, minimum switch is for when you home it, which will be back on that end. And I actually ran that wiring through the conduit. What a magical trick. We have everything wired up and ready to test. Here's our run stop button. Here's our speed control potentiometer. Either it's gonna take all day to go or we'll go in like 10 seconds. We have our motor hooked up here, all nice disconnects are both of our limit switches and our power cord from our 12 volt power supply. All right, so let's do a demonstration. I'll plug it in. And the first thing it's going to do is home itself over at the minimum. Go. There we are. Okay, I'm gonna set it to full speed and tap the button to do a cycle. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. Okay, once it's done, it'll just sit there until you tap the button again for it to go back home. I'm gonna do it again, but this time at a slow speed and we can adjust the speed as it's moving. Okay, bring it back. Okay. So we can go really, really slow. And this is the kind of speed you'd probably want for a time lapse give you an example. It doesn't look like it's moving, but pull the camera off here. And if you look at the belts, it is indeed moving just very, very slowly. Now that we know it works, I'm going to add a fan for the stepper driver and also a capacitor to smooth out the power supply. And then we can do a demonstration. Just our luck, it's a perfectly cloudless day out. So we can't do any time lapse of clouds or a sunset. We set this up instead. We're going to run a three hour long print on this 3D printer and track forward filming the progress. Now this will actually probably do about three or four repetitions before this finishes, but we'll still have a cool strobing effect. Action! Today's viewer question comes from Aiden who asks, what is the approximate cost of building a 3D printer? Well, the baseline parts consist of a power supply, driver electronics, stepper controllers and stepper motors, hot end and mechanical, such as belts and pulleys. The minimum you'll spend is around 300 US dollars. A good budget is 500 to 600 dollars. That's more realistic. To ensure success, I suggest buying a kit from PrinterBot you'd spend the same amount of money but get a design and parts that are proven to work. 
Thanks for watching. In our next episode, we're going to tackle the issue of reusing LCD screens. This is a very, very popular request, so we're going to take a look at how feasible it is and the challenges you'll face trying to do so. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.